Okay, we're talking about rate of change, also known as slope. <clears throat> um, okay, so I'm just going to show you um, another way to calculate the rate of change or the slope of a linear relation. So we should know a couple things about slope already. Um, it kind of describes how quickly um, or how the rate at which uh, something is increasing or decreasing. So like take this pattern, for example, it describes, um, yeah, how the pattern is changing every time. What is it going up by? And when we look at a graph, it kind of shows us like how steep a line is. So there's a slope, here's a steeper slope, and here's an even steeper slope. Um, so here's how we can calculate slope in a different way. So I took this pattern and I turned it into a table of values. So I made a table of values from the pattern. So at term one, I saw there's two circles. So the terms are my inputs, like my X variable, and the number of circles are my outputs or my Y variable. So I made a table from that information. Um, and then, as you saw in the other video, you could see that uh, the change in y is that it's going up by two every single time. So, and then the change in x is it's going up by one every single time. So for finding the rate of change, we look at the change in y over the change in x. So we can see that the rate of change is two over one or just two. Um, another way to look at rate of change or slope is you could actually pick just two points to determine the change in y over the change in x. So let's say I chose like this point and I don't know, the next point. Say I picked two points. I could use a formula that looks like this. I know this relation is linear. Um, so to find the change in y over the change in x, I could just use two points to determine the rate of change or the slope. And I can do that by taking my two y coordinates here. So I'm gonna call them y2 and y1. So these little subscripts, the two and the one, they're just indicating like this one could be y1 and this one could be y2. It just indicates two different y coordinates. Uh, and then I'm gonna divide that by the x coordinates, so x2 minus x1. So I'm gonna call this guy x2, and I'm gonna call this guy x1. Um, so I'm just really, like really, I'm doing exactly what I just showed you, where I'm seeing that it's going up by two, and this one's going up by one but just using like a little equation to figure it out. Okay, so y2 minus y1. So y2 I said was four minus y1 is two over x2 is two and x1 is one. So once I input those values, I can see that four take away two is two and two minus one is one. So I get a slope of two over one or just two, which is what I got before. So this equation right here is just another way to um, determine the slope or the rate of change of a linear relation. Okay, let's try it again just for practice. So let's say we had a table and maybe we just wanna use a two points. Like let's just pick two different ones. So let's pick zero, 12 and three, three. So we're gonna use two points to calculate the rate of change. So I'm going to look at my change in y over my change in x. I'm going to say like that's what the slope equals. Or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm just taking my two y coordinates. <coughs> Sorry. So let's say I call this y1 and let's say I call this y2. So I'm going to do 3 minus 12 over... I have to call this x1. Since I called this guy 12, since I called it y1, its x coordinate has to be x1. So they have to be the same one. 
and therefore this guy would be x2 because the other three is y2. So then I'll subtract those. So x2 minus, <coughs> sorry, x1. So three minus zero. And let's see what that equals. <coughs> so three minus 12 would be negative nine. And three minus nothing would be three. So I have negative nine over three, which I could simplify to just negative three. So the slope of this linear relation is negative three, which I can easily see that it's going down by three every time. Okay, let's check out a graph. <clears throat> so we already learned that to find the slope of a graph, you could just pick two points on the graph. So like maybe this point and this point, you're always picking points that are like on the corners of grids, like right there. Remember, you're not going to pick a point that's like right here, because what is that point? I have no idea. And we saw that you could just calculate the, the slope or the rate of change by looking at the rise, which is also the change in Y values. So that would be like two over the run. One, two, three, which would be three. So the rate of change of this would be two over three. But if we want to try a different way, <clears throat> then we could use that equation that we just learned about. So that slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So all I need are two coordinates. So I know this coordinate here could be represented as x is 0 and y is 3. So 0, 3. And I know this one down here or up here would be one, two, three on the x axis and one, two, three, four, five, three, five. So maybe I will call this point x1, y1, and this one will be x2, y2. So if I'm going to subtract my y's, that will be five minus three, and I'm going to subtract my x's, so that will be three minus zero. So five minus three is two and three minus zero is three. So I have a slope of two thirds, two over three. Which you could write as 0 0.66 repeating, but it makes more sense just to keep it as a fraction. Okay, and that's how you can calculate a slope if you just had two points. <clears throat>